1819, Reverend Bingham set sail. Not timid by the big old tide, God is on our side. God is good. God is great. God is compassionate. I must be the same. I, Sybil, who spread the word of the Lord, I will make my prayers heard for his Savior I was bred. Love others as I have loved you, God is only friend. God is good. God is great. God is compassion. I must be the same. Positivity is the key to all of success. If negativity strikes me, it is to him I confess. When my patience withers and all else may fail, I must remember to not let difference prevail. God is good. God is great. God is compassion. I must be the same. I hide my own pain somewhere inside. My prayers were heard. By his word I shall abide. Ocean, Connecticut, where I've seen my mouth, my fear. And I'm asking you, Lord, what does it mean? God is good. God is great. God is compassion. I must be the same. And over the one with the same heart as me, in our journey we shall see. I seek now for clarity. Clarity of my heart. Clarity of my choices. Choices that are not mine to decide. Choices that are the Lord's and in my initial child. Where will it take us? Will it all fit? How will we know? Is it even worth it? Is it even worth it? God accepts everyone who isn't perfect. I don't have a big family. My mother died. I know she's in a better place because a king did rise. Not everyone gets treated even. Look around at all these heathens. I shall stay strong when my sister has left to get them to believe is my mission next. Is it even worth it? Cordial like housewives. God will bring you life. Cooking and cleaning, helping you and healing. They took us in as a family. They didn't hold us hostage, spreading the word of God just like a prophet. Is it even worth it? These women are nothing like us. They play games that we don't play. It seems they play all day, hang out with our men by the bay. Although we have our own roads we live in, Hannah and I aren't very different. We're not different. We are not different. We're not different. We're indecisive. Indecisive to find the best for me. Me, the one that is always here, there, there, to see the bad and good in people. Forced to marry a guy despised, despised by the way he treats me. Religion, I always have to think. All my father does is drink. Taking care of myself on my own, going through hard times all alone. People who love me want the best for me, to see what I could potentially be. Maki maki bawi kapono no kapo e apo. It's hard to say what side I want to be. This new God is about being equal and being there for me. We have to realize what's in front of their eyes. Different ways of thinking. We all think different, but have something alike. It's really hard to choose between the old and the new. I think differently, but that's just me and what I like. The Hawaiians believed in status of being and living. Sometimes it's difficult because no one is forgiving. Sometimes it's really difficult because no one is forgiving. Forgiving. Of our differences. Forgiving. Of our beliefs. Forgiving. Of our perspectives of which we seek. Do you really want to know? E ho i maui ka piko, e kupa a vau mana kapu ka niko. Hikiki kupa a, can you really stand fast? A follower of another? That does make us wonder. You're always a tano. All you do is follow. You should grow up, e o o mai oi. E imi i kane e mai poi. Find a man! What I am to do? Is that all I'm destined for? That does make us wonder. Ke maki nei ka poi. 
Ang muli ko na malihini. Because of the newcomers. Kupaa. Kukuo. Yeah. Eh, Kuku ikikawa. Stop on fighting. Nanay ko peno kikuo kalani. Look, what happened? That does make us wonder. Eh, Kupaa vao no ko ukuhina nui. Eh, pula pula vao no kalahu. Are you? You have no rank. What change will you make? What can you even do? And who am I to thank? Me. Not you. Myself. And that does make us wonder. I have nothing to give to my elite and great And this, and is, this how is how we live. This is how we live. Abuse. Hana Ino. Abused by the power. The power of the gods. No god, Aulalo. We are finished with the gods. This is how we live. Paunaheyo. Our sacred temples are gone. Paunakaku. Our laws are banished. Paunahua. Wanoa. Done with the gods. Behela ke ano kahiko. Ke ano na kupuna. The ways of our ancestors. This is how we live. Are you? Just gonna break the old ways? Makiana no. We are all going to die. Realization. Yo. Realizing the salvation. Yo. The salvation of my people. For a son who was sent down to the earth. To die for all sins. Gives mercy. Acceptance. Passion. Yalohano. Iloko anahanahewa. He aloha no, compassion. He aloha no, iloko ka He aloha no, compassion. He aloha no, aloha no. He aloha no. He aloha no. What is sin? Sin is any want of conformity to or transgression of the law of God. And what is the sin by where our first parents fell? The sin by where our first parents fell was the eating of the forbidden fruit. And what is the misery of the estate wherein man fell? This one is still hard. Baptism requires study and diligence. Now try again. What is the misery of the estate wherein man fell? All mankind by their fall, lost communion with God, and are under his wrath and curse, and so made liable to all miseries in this life, to death itself, and to the pains of hell forever. Did God leave all men to perish in the, in the estate of sin and misery? No. God, out of his mere good pleasure, has elected some to everlasting life, and has brought these chosen to a state of salvation by a redeemer, the Lord Jesus Christ. Excuse me, please. Yes? The doctor wishes to in the village right away. There's trouble. Trouble? Many have come down from the mountains where they cut the sandalwood. There's a great sickness among them. No! He said to bring these things. Let me help that. There are supplies, there are powders from his medical supplies. You get them, Lucy. And you study until I return. I What are you doing, Hannah? Learning the word of God so that I may have baptism. Oh. What does every sin deserve? Every sin deserves God's wrath and curse, both in this life and that which is to come. Do you believe this, Hannah? Yes. I want to be baptized. Why? So that I may go to heaven. This God allows the Kanaka in his heaven? Yes. Even women? Yes. We are all equal in God's sight. Then why aren't we equal on earth? Be quiet, Polly. How many of the Kahuna do you know who treat us as one of their own? How many of the Ali do you know who treat us as they do each other? You don't know what you're talking about. No, you don't know, Hana. Things are different for you because you're Hapa Haole. They treat you so, welcome you into their home as a friend because they think you're half like them. You're not like me. You've always had more for your comfort in life. You don't know what it's like to be poor, and you don't know what it's like to be below everyone else. So don't say your stupid words to me, Hana. Holly. What is it? Why are you so angry with me? You could come here to
too if you want it. I'm sorry, hon. Forgive my words. I don't mean to hurt you. The greed of men has caused many deaths. Men come from foreign lands went to Iliahi, the scented sandalwood. They bring western goods and teach the chiefs to covet these things. They ply them with liquor until they are drunk. Sell them useless things. Never worth half of what they charge. The chiefs pay in sandalwood. The maka ainana must go to cut the wood. Holes the size of ships are dug. The commoners must fill them with wood. Pickles. 133 and one third pound. One people. The wood grows high in the mountains. Many leave their fields unattended. Hollow ruts. The sweet potatoes are eaten by worms. Men, women, mothers with children go. Today many die. Tomorrow many more. The people stayed too long. The winds blew too cold. The rain came too hard. Not enough food. Exposed to nature's elements. Not enough to keep warm. They came down from the green hills crying for the dead they left behind. All for what? So a few foreigners could increase their wealth. Buy lace for their wives. Crystal for their tables. Stallions for their sons. My dear sisters, if you knew with what misery and death the foundations of wealthy American lives, comfortable and safe, are built on, these were once a thriving people. The white men who came here for profits from sandalwood, profits from whale oil, or for the pleasure of women. I am ashamed to call my countrymen. If you had seen what I saw today, men, women, and children dying. I am sure that you would lay down your beautiful silk dresses and your colored ribbons and your lace gloves and all the finery that surrounds you and take up a Christian vow of service and poverty so that never again would you prosper from the death of others. Many chiefs have accepted this new God. Yes. My own Kamwani, he wished I would believe. And kill Poland. Why don't you? Some things I like. I do like that women may speak to this God. In the old days, only the kahuna could speak to God at the heiau. And I do like that women may teach about this God as Mrs. Bingham teaches. But there's some things I just don't like. I'm afraid that this God would have too much power, that too many things would change. There's something about the Mekanen I do not trust. Something I, I cannot name. They have been kind teachers to us. Yes. And they do seem to care for the people. They do many things for us. I. You know, Hannah, When I was young, I felt so strong. That is a good thing about you to feel strong in your body and your purpose. I was not afraid. I saw something to do and I did it. But now, the foreigners, they change everything with their wealth and their ships and their guns. They have made the power of the chiefs weak. I make a law against the sale of rum, and a ship comes full of men eager for drink. If the captain does not like the couple, he says, sell us rum or we'll, I'll fire my, my cannon on your town. 
Or perhaps he sends an angry mom to make trouble and fight. What am I to do? Should I keep the law and have destruction? If we engage him, there will be more ships and more ships with their guns coming from his country. What am I to do? Relent and give him route? This makes the power of the chiefs look weak. In my younger days, I did not hesitate. My mind did not trouble me. The way was clear. I was not afraid. I was not afraid to take down what I knew to be wrong or to do what I wish, but now. Everything has changed so much. Yes. I know. The chiefs died. All my old friends and counselors. Kale Pulani, gone. My old Kamwali, gone. Kalai Moku grows so old. His strength fades. My people die. People are dying. Do something. Can't you do anything? Too many haole. Another warship. Another government. Give us sandalwood. Women. Where are the women? And rum. More rum. Call for a warship. These chiefs can't tell us what to do. I would do what I like. This isn't a murder. England. France. These aren't civilized human beings. Take care of your own people. Take care. Can't you do anything? There's too much sickness. I need some land. Send for a warship. To be paid. Stupid savages. There aren't enough children anymore. I mean, who am I? Why did you leave your God? Can you do something? What does every sin deserve? Everyone will die. Die. Why can't you do anything? Away. Away. Away.
dream. I saw that place. What place? <laughs> the place of fires. Oh, no, you must lay down. You must oh. lay down. It was so hot. My people were burning in great rivers of lava. It's all right. You're here now. <laughs> The love of Jesus that has brought me here. Is it, is it Jesus who saves us from he the He is the light of the world. It is only through him that we are saved. Oh. Perhaps I will try one of these prayers now. No. Let's no. no. never be here soon. No, no. Jesus taught us, <laughs> saying, Our Father, who art in heaven. Our Father, who art in My heaven. My beloved had withdrawn himself and was calm. I sought him, but I could not find him. I called him. He did not answer. My soul failed me when he spake. The watchmen that surrounded the city, they found me, they smote me, they wounded me. The keepers of the vault took away my veil from me. I charge you, O daughters of Jerusalem, if you find my beloved, that you tell him that I am sick of love. Good morning, Hannah. Are you troubled, Hannah? No. Do not feel bad, Hannah. Reverend Bingham says that you may take the examination in another month. Someday you will be baptized. It's all right. Let us continue our work. Right. You may begin reading with Matthew 13. And he speak many things to them in parables, saying, Behold, a sower went forth to sow, and when he sowed, some seeds fell by the wayside. Hannah, please continue. Hannah, sorry, please continue. I don't know the place. Now you must pay attention. Matthew 13, verse 5. And some fell upon stony places where they had not much earth, and forthwith they sprung because they had no deepness of earth. What is wrong with you today? Jones came back. I see. I see. He wants her to be his wahine. I told him that I would not come to his bed unless we made a Christian marriage. You are very right. Hannah, God's love and acceptance of you requires your virtue. But he speaks so nicely to me. He says he loves me. But if he will not marry you, it is not love, but only a bodily desire for you. If only I could turn my thoughts away from him. I'm trying very hard. Yes, I know. But you must learn to turn away from what is wicked, no matter how sweetly it calls you. 
Can such kindness be wicked? Yes, it is very clear. And when he sowed, some seeds fell by the wayside, and the fowls came and devoured them up. And, and some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprung up and choked them. Sybil, please, come hurry! How did this happen? Holly! Who did this to you? I found her outside like this. A lady came by and sat at her. Why? Wow. She called her that name. What name? Kawal. She's badly injured. Oh, help me to lie her on the mat. I must go away. Oh. You are in no state to go anywhere. What if those people find you again? Oh. Hey, Kawaoi. I cook up now. To her that way. But she is Kawa. Stop calling her that. She's a person just like everyone else. I don't care anymore. I'm tired of always being afraid that someone might find out. My father gave me to a family when I was a baby. He wanted me to live without the shame. He's been giving this woman food, copper, pigs just to keep me. He lived poorly so that I might have a life. It was him he saw being beaten in the village. Last night he came to find me, to tell me that my real mother is very sick and wishes once more to see me. Others of the woman's family saw him and forced her to tell the truth. That's why he found me this way. But I don't care anymore. My father's better than any man in the village, whether he has the marks of a koa or not. Give it everything for me. I'd rather stand by him than any other person. Even you. Ka'ahumani. Be quiet now. That woman only likes what I brought to her table. I must go now. I know you will hate me now, Hannah. Oh, Hannah won't hate you. Hannah, where is your Christian charity? Let's try not to hate. Perhaps we should move her to the bed of the cellar. Wait until the doctor looks at her. You will keep her here. Yes, we will. But she will be a filthy thing in your house. She needs our help. <laughs> Let's go, Hannah. She lied and deceived me. She's been in my house many times. I treated her as one of my own. My own, my own favorite. My own favorite. She should be punished. Perhaps she is already. Have, have you heard from Jones? to talk. What does he say? He loves me and wishes me to share his bed. And, and what do you wish? I wish this, but I don't go. Oh. Every day he comes to my house. Every day he asks me. Tell him don't come. Do you think it's wrong? The laws of Jehovah say it's wrong, Hana. I tell him I can't see him. But he says I think too much about sin. He says that the Midianelli worship God in a poison way. He says that if we don't harm others, we don't sin. And God will love us no matter what we do. He says he loves me better than any woman. Then why doesn't he make a Christian marriage with you? Isn't that the way of his people? But you said yourself that you thought it took more than words to keep a man. <laughs> well, perhaps I was wrong. I have come to ask you to have pity on Polly. She lied and deceived me. 
She was only trying to live a life like others. She is not from a dirty race. She is Why? Why do you think these people are so terrible? They are what they are. Think for a moment, Your Majesty. What if you had been had been brought up in such a station? Me? I am Aliki. And what if your own father had suffered so that you could live a better life? Wouldn't you try to make the most of that life? Perhaps. And think, if you were this person who looked to her chiefest as the one who should protect and guide her, what would you hope that that chiefest would do? Are you saying that I should treat these people differently? I am not one to advise the Kuhin, Kuhina Nui. But I know this truth from the Holy Scripture. Now abideth faith, hope, and love. These three, but the greatest of these is love. Let, let us have some tea. No, I, please. I have too much no, work no, to you do. You helped me. You, you helped me when I was ill. Please, come. Come, stay. We will lomi, lomi you. Let us, let us help you. Please, stay. Yeah. Try Perhaps it. Perhaps I will, I will try. Yes. You've never tried it? No, I, I haven't, can I? It's very good. Your body will relax and make itself well. Yes. <sighs> well, before you came, we spoke of Jones. Oh? Yes. He wants Hannah to come to him. Of course you won't go, Hannah. Of course I won't go. He says he loves her. Christian marriage is how a man proves his love. All your life you will only have one man? Yes. Um, unless only if a husband dies may a woman take another husband. You've only had one? Yes. Well, although once, long ago, I was engaged to another man. Engaged? That is when a man and a woman promise that they will marry each other. A promise? Then others will know that they are taken. What was his name? His name? Yes. <laughs> Levi. Mr. Levi Parsons. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> her mind and body relax. <laughs> he was handsome, this man Parsons. Oh yes, <laughs> he was like summer. Where is he? He was so kind, and I was so lonely. Where is he? Gone. Where? To be a missionary. He's one of the Mikanelli? Not here, in Turkey, far away. They told him that he could not take a wife. The man must go single. He left you. It was our duty to part. But he, you loved him, didn't you? Summer, we were so close. I have often wished. You've wished? Yes, I wished it so. <laughs> I must go. Oh, no, 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 don't get up too quickly. You're too deep. Oh, Ole. I tell you, I must go. Oh. <laughs> Remember me the way that I was. what you know to be your Christian duty to God. And you would like to choose. No! I sleep, but my heart waketh. It is the voice of my beloved that knocketh, saying, 
Open to me, my sister, my love. She came to our own bosom to be instructed, mature and meditative. Her mind seemed instinctively prepared to receive the word. My beloved is mine, and I am his. He feedeth among the lilies. More intelligent, more attractive, more refined. She was our joy, the crown of our school, rising to a new life, thoroughly instructed in a new system of morals. And we dared to believe that she loved the truth. The test came. I am my beloved's, and his desire is toward me. Official wealth and power combined to turn the scale. Yet her conscience was so ill at ease and she was just at the point of resisting when she found she had not the strength. Many waters cannot quench love, nor can the floods drown it. If a man would give the substance of his house for love. This is one of the keenest trials of a mission teacher. We plant a vineyard, and when we look for it to put forth grapes, it brings wild grapes. Come, my beloved, let us go into the fields. I loved her like the child of mine own brother or sister. Set me as a seal upon thine heart. Oh, oh that, that my head were waters, and that my eyes were a fountain of tears, that, that I might, might weep, weep for the slain daughters of my people. Faith, hope, and love, but the greatest of these is love. There was, when I was younger, a woman who came to live in the hut nearby who was a child. She was a strange woman with dark looks and knotted fingers. I knew she did not want her baby because many times I saw her gather plants to make a baby go away. But the baby wouldn't go away. And it grew inside her anyway. She had the baby in the dark, by herself. And when we went to see it, she told us to go away. That the baby was very sick and would not live. One night, when there was no moon, I saw her steal out with the child, all wrapped up. I followed her into the forest. She went far into the night, into the uplands, where no one lives but the mountain spirits and the ghost. I thought perhaps the baby had died and she had come to bury it. I thought perhaps its sickness had made it unbearable to look at, and she wanted no one to see it, even in death. She stopped at a place that was quiet and hidden. I watched her place the white bundle into the ground. She began to walk very quickly back and forth, looking at the bundle. Then she would pull and twist at her fingers. Over and over again she did this until finally, she turned and ran. Muttering under her breath, she ran away. And I watched her disappear like a thin ribbon into the night. And there in the forest, I began to feel sorry for her. I felt sorry that she had lost her baby and could see that she now suffered from terrible loss and grief. I thought these things as I walked back, looking through the black branches at the night sky. I had gone some distance when I first heard it. It sounded like a small cry. So small I thought it was the faraway cry of an owl. But it came again. Louder, and a little louder, and louder, and I knew! She would leave her child while it still had a life. The soft crying moved through me. I was sick. I ran back. Cold fear flew all around me. I ran as fast as I could toward the sound, but there was nothing there. I heard it again and ran. And again and again I would hear and run, searching and searching, but finding nothing. For it seemed like hours I tried, but I could not find the place. Exhausted, I sat down and wept. I cried for everything, for the baby, myself, my father, all those like me in the world who had been cast aside and now suffered. I don't 
know how long I sat there so abandoned without hope. When all of a sudden, it came to me. It was as if loving hands had laid a key hay over my shoulders. And I was quiet. And in the quiet, I heard the voice. The voice of a baby clear and strong crying in the night. I stood and walked straight to it. I gathered up the small life I was meant to save. I had made a new life. Not for my body, but from a thrown away life that no one wanted. I took the baby far away to a kind woman I knew who would care for a child. I had given a new life. And now, that is what the Mika and Ale have given to me. A new life from one that was unwanted, thrown away and treated like so much rubbish. I have made you some tea. Thank you, Polly. You are so kind, Polly. No, it is you who have shown me kindness. Do you like it here at the mission, Polly? Yes, here I hide nothing. We have talked it over, and I would like to ask you if you would stay on and work for us. Stay. You will have duties. We need help. Very much. But don't expect pay. We have no money. But could give you food, shelter, clothing. And your father may come visit you here. You don't care what I am? We know what you are, Polly. You are kind, honest, hardworking. But we do expect you to study the ways of our God. Because of your kindness, I will study the way of God and make him mine. The doctor says you have you have mended nicely. Aye. You will let me wash the tea things? Now there's a good start, Polly. And what does the doctor say of you, sister? He says we must wait. He says some of these things go away by themselves. But if it doesn't, if it doesn't, he will have to operate. Oh. The Queen, it is past time that the Queen said she would call. I feel so tired. Lucy, go and rest. Go. The, the lesson. Ah, do it. I do feel strangely. I think I will go rest if you don't mind. Please. You have come for your lesson. Yes. I brought you some fish. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> and some poi, fresh as you like it. You will spoil me. <laughs> if good things aren't for good people, then who are they for? Well, I guess I don't know. <sighs> I have been thinking about the church. You wish to join us? I have some thoughts. Do you wish to share them with me? <laughs> yes, but I don't wish to make you feel bad. Feel bad? I will listen if you... But how? How will you listen? With, with what ears will you listen and what tongue will you speak? That's the mission or of your own? I wish for you to to listen. I will hear your monotony. There are many things which I am happy to receive from this new God, your God. Jesus Christ, he is a kind of God. Aye. And he shows us a way of mercy, such as the way you treat Pali. This is something that the gods, uh, in the, the old gods in the temple uh, did not teach us and, and women may, may teach about this god and speak to this god as you do. That is an unusual duty of a mission wife. <laughs> Nevertheless, uh, it is done. Aye. 
You do many good things. We want to do good. Yes, but... But, but something I just can't... Something makes me hold myself back from your God. You see, I remember the old days. The gods ruled over us in ways I did not like. So when I saw a chance to take them down, I did. I did away with them. But, but I see, I see the way that, I see that this God, when he, he has a way uh, with people who choose him, he has a strong hold on their hearts. And I know if I choose this God, the people will follow as they have always followed you. Yes, but I also know that once this God takes hold, I will never be able to change the minds of the people. He is a God of strength. He is a God of white men. Yes. And the white men wish that the, they need to be lords all over us, always. If we follow this God, maybe some good will come out of it, some peace. I feel that other nations will see that we believe in the same God and, and surely they'll want to protect the Christian people from wrong. It is a good thought. I know all the names the foreigners have for us. I know many of them think us ignorant savages. But perhaps, perhaps some will surely want to protect a, a Christian people from wrong. Uh, my people are dying. We are a dying race. There is still hope that your people can revive themselves. Do not give up that hope. You are so kind. But others of your race, will they ever lose their contempt? Will they ever cease to feel that they need to be lords over us? I don't know. Our ways are so different. Yes. I know that we can frighten the very heart of your holy world as I can frighten the very heart of you, Binamu Wahine. Yes. The big wave comes. How will I steer the canoe? The doctor informs me that the tumor is rapidly altering. It approached the surface, exhibiting a dark spot. He said that should it become an open ulcer, the whole system would be overcome with its malignancy. He advised immediate operation, warning me that my system would not tolerate any drug to deaden the pain. I agreed to proceed. That night, after everyone had retired, I walked for many hours back and forth in the yard. Depraved? Diseased and helpless, I yield myself up entirely to the will of the Holy One. Cold daylight. The doctor now informs me all is in readiness. The chair, the white porcelain wash basin, the dozens of fresh clean towels, the shiny medical instruments, the strings for tying up my arteries, the shiny needles to sew up my flesh. I sink into the chair, wishing it would swallow me away. The doctor shows me how I must hold my arm and how to press my feet against the foot of the chair. He looks at me. Have you made up your mind to have it cut out? Yes, sir. Are you ready now? Yes, sir. My shawl is removed, exhibiting my left arm. My breast and side are perfectly bare. I see the knife in the doctor's hand. I'm going to begin now. Yes, sir. Then comes a gash, long and deep, first on one side of my breast and then on another. Deep sickness seizes me and deprives me of my breakfast. This is followed by extreme faintness. My sufferings are no longer local. Agony spreads through my whole system. I feel every inch of me failing. 
Every glimpse I have of the doctor is only his hand covered to the wrist with blood. It seems like hours that I feel my flesh cut away. I am beneath his hand, cutting, cutting out the entire breast, cutting out the glands, cutting under the arms, tying up the arteries and sewing up the wound. I know it is vanity, but I am grateful for what small dignity God has granted. The operation he has granted that I do not lose control of my voice or person. Kindly, he says, there is not one in a thousand who could have borne it as you have done. Many dangers still lie before me. I am greatly debilitated and often see duplicates of everything my eye beholds. Now that it is over, a hollowness falls over me. Sister, how are you, Lucy? I don't know. You're still weak? Yes. Is there any pain? Yes, and a kind of emptiness. The doctor says I must change the dressing. Oh. I hope. I know now I'll be nothing but ashamed to my husband. Don't say that, Lucy. Everyone knows that's the first thing they'll think when they see I'll be ashamed of him. Oh, don't think like that. You know it's true. You must thank God for your life, Lucy. Yes, I must. I have to change the dressing. Yes. Does it look, I mean... It's not a pretty sight, Sybil, I'm sorry. And there's an odor, not pleasant. I see. Oh. I have to change it. I'm sorry, Sybil. Good morning. Aloha. 
You are resolved to study for your baptism? I, uh, yes. Polly will be baptized this Sunday. She will? Yes. She has studied very hard. And the Christian path is not always an easy one. But it is the one that brings salvation. I need a needle. You may sit here and stop. Perhaps I am not wanted. You know these questions for baptism, buddy? I. Then you will come here and sit by me and help me. First question is what is sin? Sin is any want of or conformity to the laws or transgression of or transgression of the laws of God. What is the sin by where our first parents fell? The sin by where our first parents fell is the eating. Polly, you you read it first and I'll follow you. The sin by where our first parents fell was the eating of the forbidden fruit.
We have seen this already with the sandalwood trade. We have seen this greed. Do not hesitate. We must think and fight fast with our quick thoughts and our grasp of foreign ways. To think too long is to ignore the hungry sharks that swim among us. I do not look to the past with contempt, but rather seek to preserve that which was good and unite it with what is good of this new world that comes to us now.